And now for the Monero development segment. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Digu, what's up, man? How you doing? Nothing much. How y'all doing? Chilling. Enjoying the final days of summer over here. Hopefully, uh, it, yes. Hopefully, <laughs> like October, you know, one, one of the best of global warming. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, it's pretty humid here, so the last days of summer are definitely upon us. <laughs> yeah, what do you got today? Um, I'm just going to re-go over the Monero Saves tour. It's a story about how um, Tevador's work into Random X, well, really, the history of how we... Tor is able to use um, uh, alteration to random X to save his network. I think we covered it briefly, um, I believe, like a month ago when it first yeah, came yeah, up. Yeah, it, yeah, was yeah. Like, it was that was being demoed. I think it released on live, I believe, like August the 23rd, I think like Wednesday of this week. And I'm covering mainly because um, Drunk Dialed Me, I believe he was also on like a month and a half ago, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken pretty much made this post and then tagged us in it. So I was like, you know, that's what people want to see. So we'll get with people, what the people want to yeah, see. Yeah, let's bring it up. It's, it's good. It's important. It's a big topic. Obviously, yeah. Tor, very important technology in the in yes. the digital privacy liberty space, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've adopted essentially Monero tech for purposes of, of solving a problem they had. So uh, bullish in that respect that's Monero is you know once again kind of on the on the cutting edge of tech so it's it's nice to see this this happening yeah it, um that makes perfect sense to me and I'm gonna go a quick overview I want to keep it I've, I've always had this issue when I'm presenting things keeping it at the right level assuming like I don't want to assume everyone knows what Tor is what random, random X is so it sort of helps it prevents how deep I could go because I have to like give the base you know what it is. But yeah, I wish I could just wish we had more and more time to go deeper into things. But I don't know if people want to hear all of that. <laughs> but yeah, we're just... they, pro- they probably do, man. They probably do. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, st- start on the on the low level and let's see how deep you go. Yeah. So basically, like very low level, um, what is Tor and how does it work? Um, very, very high level, like very like straightforward way of explaining it. Tor is a way for you to an- anonymize your internet traffic by bouncing around different computers essentially that's all you have to know to understand this presentation and it's the only well i guess there's i2p but tor is way more popular than itp and they have a different um infrastructure but tor is like the most popular anonymized like browsing network been around since i believe the the 90s i want to say and deep lore and how it came to exist it was actually funded by the government at first as an enemy network but they had to open it up so everyone could use it, right? Because if only government's using it, it's not that private. But if everyone's using it, you get a lot more privacy. But it's really essential, right? Because it's a lot better than a VPN because you're, when you use a VPN, you're sort of trusting a VPN. And the only thing that really compares to it is something like I2P, which is a little not as popular. But that's pretty much it. Tor is how you anonymize your internet traffic. And what is a big problem with this is that the way Tor is designed makes it particular particularly susceptible to DDoS experience. And I'm sure Doug has experience with DDoS attacks, unfortunately, also. <laughs> and um, DDoS, a, yeah, DDoS attack is pretty much when um, someone floods your network with a bunch of fake computers. But you, you, could, you could think of it basically if, if you're like running like a, you know, if you're running a restaurant and someone sends in like 100 people to go into the restaurant and waste your time essentially, right? (laughs) Like your restaurant's a computer. And so this person would just pay or go get a bunch of random people to go go into your restaurant. They don't buy anything. They just ask you a bunch of questions all day and and waste your time. That's what a DDoS attack is. You send a bunch of requests to a server and just hopefully the server times out or you just mess with it. And it and it really hard to prevent. One of the easiest ways to prevent it is by blocking IP addresses. But when you're anonymous, your IP address doesn't that doesn't really work, right? Because the whole point of it is that Tor hides your IP address. So they use proof of random X, sort of. And random X is basically the idea of the proof of work algorithm that's designed to be CPU specific and ASIC resistant. And you might have heard proof of work from things like Bitcoin. They use like 
SHA-256 is their main algorithm, but it's not ASIC resistant, which is a big issue because the ASIC can pretty much mean that regular people can't really compete with it. So it would not make sense to use that in this solution. So what they did is they basically they used random X and there's this whole episode on the, the, the Doug has about random X is really, I would say my favorite, I don't know. The scaling feature in, in Monero is pretty cool too, but I would say but maybe my second favorite is probably random X. I go back and forth depending on what articles I read, but it's a really cool feature of Monero. And Tevador basically used evolved random X to work in this specific situation. And random X is a pre-work algorithm that is optimized for general purpose CPUs. And it basically uses random code generation to make it really specific to CPUs. That does that means that everyone can participate. You can't like make a, like in Bitcoin, you can go to I believe China makes most of the ASICs, and you can get a big advantage from having application specific hardware, essentially. But that's not good for a network because it's like you don't want to have to go buy a computer from China in order to use Tor, right? That would just not really be that private in the first place. So you would use something like random, something like random X to make it so that if you have a phone, we have a CPU in it because all most devices have a CPU in it. You can be actually decentralized and resistant. And to make this sort of give an overview of how this works, you could imagine that instead of having anyone able to walk walk into your restaurant, they would simply have to, you know, um, do a math problem before they can ask you a question, right? So instead of going, being able to walk into the restaurant and waste your time by asking you nonsense questions, you would require them to do a proof of work before they got there. Maybe most people just like, I'm not doing this, they would just leave. So the attack really wouldn't work. So that's pretty much what happens here. In order to access Tor, you have to do a proof of work essentially. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, and this is really good because um, it makes it still private and still decentralized, right? Because in theory, you could say I, I will just require an ID, right? Which is terrible, KYC, KYC, but that would be a way to prevent DDoS. But that's not private, and that's a terrible way to do it. So the only way people have come up with so far is to use something like RandomX to make it. When you make a request, you have to do a bunch of work essentially, and that's pretty much it. But the story of how Tevador um, got here really goes back, I believe, to when Random X was first implemented on Monero. And I think that was like, what, 2018, if I'm not mistaken? 2016? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was late. Yeah, I guess around 2018. 2018. And it was a big, big change. I remember watching an interview that Doug did, and there was this um, person on there who was like basically saying it, it wouldn't work. <laughs> If she had like this, like it was like an hour long interview where she was talking, like giving the specific reasons why a coin can't be ASIC mm -hmm. resistant. You know, give her a bit of a doubt. It hadn't been done before successfully. So, I mean, she was historically correct, but just I mean, wrong even, in reality. You know, even yeah. uh, Ricardo Spagni, Fluffy Pony, was, was opposed to it. Uh, really? I don't know he thought to what degree it would work or not, but he was. I think he thought it was kind of futile to to try to prevent ASICs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's yeah. He has since come around. Actually, recently, I saw him tweeting the other day, and this was um, more so in response to Tornado Cash. He was speaking about that, and then the conversation got to the potential of you know essentially having to protect the mining network and keep it as decentralized and as possible. Uh, to avoid essentially governments mandating that miners do certain things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so realizing that uh, random X and by way of random X creating a more decentralized CPU based mining network mm -hmm. uh, and preventing the creation of ASIC mining essentially corporations has effectively created a, a more robust mining network that's less likely to be essentially co-opted by by governments where they can mandate regulation. So I think he's kind of since come around to it. Wow. I think initially he thought it was futile and that uh, you know, ASICs would would, you know, rule the day, even if, you know, you tried to avoid them otherwise. But it's been a success so far. But yeah, there were definitely a lot of doubters in the community uh, when it was being proposed. Yeah, that yeah, I guess hindsight's always twenty twenty. So I'd, yeah. So it, I mean at the time it came out, it it was and still is revolutionary. I think as far as algorithms go, I think there's random X, which has been battle tested to be ASIC resistant. 
And I think Argon 2 also to a slightly lesser degree has been tested by some coins also to be ASIC resistant so far. But yeah, when it came out, it was revolutionary, essentially. The idea that you could design an algorithm that people could not optimize, you know, is, is really, really groundbreaking stuff. And yeah. it really took, yeah. I mean, they, then, they could, I guess, they could optimize it, right? But yeah. not to the point where it's efficient enough, where it's yeah. better, so much better than a CPU, where it makes sense to invest money into producing these specific uh, applications, right? Yeah. Then I believe with something Howard Schultz said, I believe if you opt, if you created, if, if you sat down and created a random X optimized, um, like machine, okay. you essentially spend like millions of dollars to make a CPU. Is what he right. said. <laughs> Better. You, you would, yeah. Here that we you have. You know, with a with a crappy <laughs> CPU, probably they just wouldn't be as good. Right. So that's what. Yeah. So I guess you could, but you would end up just reinventing the CPU, which would get you would spend millions, billions of dollars, probably at this point. Right. Which probably is kind of cool. More. Think about it too, right? Because it's helping yeah. potentially helping to uh, speed up the development of CPUs, right? Yeah. yeah. The CPU war. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, the CPU, the CPU war brought on by things like random max. That's all I didn't think about that. I wonder if Howard Chu. I was. I, I just love when you have him on just to listen to him. Just, just, just these guys just talk about. Like, yeah, we, we got to get him on again, yeah, especially now that he hasn't been on Twitter. He was booted from Twitter, and I think yeah, just the one. Yeah, to I will say if I remember correctly, I think the current this um, this might be wrong. Um, at one point this was true. The most like efficient, right? So mm -hmm. like money for power usage not necessarily maximum hash rate most efficient was just a ryzen 7 3700x which is like crazy to think about because that's like that's like a, a consumer desktop cpu right that's not even threadripper it's not epic it's not a xeon it's not a server processor it's oh, just a wow. desktop one that was the most efficient one it yep. might not be true it's probably some of the newer ryzen ones now but at one point that was true uh no, so like to get oh. i'm sorry no you're good i'll ask you i'll ask you later you were saying how much does it sell for? I think right is what you're saying. Oh, yeah, uh, you can get one. I uh, don't. You can't really get one new anymore because the CPU is like it's a couple gens old. But uh, I mean, I bought one for like a hundred and ten dollars. So, and the hash rate is not going to be like super high, but it's like it's enough to where um, it's like it's reasonable. It's reasonable, and it's an eight core, sixteen thread, so it's it's decent. Yeah, it's it's also I think wow. important to note that before you know before Random X, for those who have you know are kind of newbish to Monero, uh, Monero had always attempted to be ASIC resistant. So, but before Random X, really the only solution was to to change our proof of work mm -hmm. whenever it appeared that ASICs had been created, uh, which obviously wasn't really sustainable or practical or desirable because it kind of led arguably led to centralization right you had mm -hmm. uh, a group a core group that was deciding all right we'll change we'll change the proof of work now we'll change the proof of work now to kind of boot these asics uh so random x solved that problem where it became automatic where there was no need to upgrade the protocol every whatever six months to a year to to boot them rather that it just created a proof of work where asics essentially couldn't be created Wow, and Alaska Aina in the chat says it's essentially it really is the best cost to hash rate um, still. So I imagine it might be something above it, but it still is, is really good. And yeah, for the CPU uh, yeah. price, if you factor that in too. But you can get, like, if you have a really optimized setup, you could get like over uh, 9,000 hashes a second. Uh, so good that God. would be like pretty, wow. uh, yeah, it's, it's decent. It's decent. <laughs> Uh, Digula, just from my understanding, so Tevador obviously uh, was instrumental in creating Random X with with Howard. How, mm -hmm. My understanding is Howard kind of like proposed the 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 concepts, and mm -hmm. Tevador essentially implemented them. Um, and a I'm sure added in inventive work as well as he did that. But then with with this tour thing, was Tevador the one who participated in creating the new? proof for work that tor is using that is based off random x it was was he did he partake in that i believe um from what my most of my information comes from um tevador's blog about what he did if you google dos protection for onion services um i can is it possible for me to google that and then share 
or maybe I, I didn't realize that he was the one that actually uh, you know reworked yeah. Random X now to make it compatible for Tor's usage. That that's yeah, awesome. back, is there anything I can show the blog tuxedo? I don't. Yeah, how would I go about? Because it's really good. Is if he details his mm. entire thought process going back to his work with with um with Howard Chu actually. Oh, sorry, I didn't go back. But yeah, it's, it's a really that's most of my information comes from because I, I don't have an interview of him talking about it. Mm -hmm. But um, he literally has an entire GitHub README where he just goes through everything that led him up to designing a lot of the, the code for equal equal X, which is what I think a version of what they use now. So my understanding is I don't, he doesn't mention Howard Chu or anyone, and it seems from the way that he wrote the dev blog that it was. The majority of work came from him. But once again, that's just my only source. No one else is really talking about where it comes from. And they only mentioned Tevador's work in the official tour project. Like, oh, we're doing this now. So my understanding is that it was ma not mainly, I guess this specific work was mainly Tevador. I could be wrong, but it was came heavily from the work he did in Random X with Howard Chu and other people. What was Need Money? Ah, yes. Tuxedo has it right here. I think that's in it. The, that's what you were talking about. Yes, it is like the, the the best thing. My favorite thing in this space is one of Doug's interviews with the people just talking about what they did, and the second best is the person just writing about what they did. And I find that Tevador does that really well. Um, and he also has the same write up for Random X, which is also an amazing read if you want to look up the similar read for um for his work. But yeah, essentially that's my understanding of it. And I can go through the his process of going through that, but so I don't want to exclude anyone that might have been involved, but my sources only point to Tevador doing the majority of the work. Sorry to give you a long answer for that. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Yeah, you, you could drop the links in the in the chat too. Um, yeah, um, Tuxedo did a really good job of finding the one. And it, it is, like like I said, number one is a video, second is Tevador writing about it. It's quite, and he breaks it down, makes it very understandable, cites his sources, gives like the history of what's going on. It's yeah, really yeah. top tier work. But, um, from that um, dev blog, we find out that Random X is great for mining, like on a decentralized network, but um, it is different when you want to use something like on Tor. For example, like a lot of people were saying, why don't you just accept Monero for the proof of work instead? I'm like that doesn't really create a great customer experience, right? Imagine you're some guy that just wants to go on Tor to just read some private files from WikiLeaks, right? You shouldn't have to have Monero to participate in that, even though I love Monero. I'd rather that person come find Monero on their own naturally. So there are some changes to the algorithm that were made. And a lot of changes were due to the speed also, because you can imagine that if you have a motherboard on the left here, it's going to be a lot more powerful than a phone. But you should should, should still be able to use your phone to browse Tor. So um, Tevador made some tweaks to it to make it more specific to being used on Tor. And someone also asked, could this be merged mine with Tor um, since they use I'm gonna I mean everything is possible when you put enough devs on it but I think right now as current implementation I don't think it's possible because they don't exactly use the the same mining algorithms actually Tevador went and pulled from some other hash algorithms to make Tor's um, proof of work algorithm so unfortunately you you can't merge mine them and merge mine is where you you could use the work on Tor to support the Monero network and use the Monero network to support the work on Tor. So that probably likely isn't currently possible in its current implementation, which is something I think Drunk Dial Me had a, a like a conversational thread about. But yeah, any questions so far? I'm, I'm covering everything. No, good stuff. Good stuff. But yeah, so um, he actually pulled from, I know I don't know if we can say that, that word here, but the, the, the Zcash's one of their algorithms called Equahash that was actually, I believe, supposed to be async resistant, but it actually was broken. But it had a really efficient, um, well, not efficient, but a really good algorithm still, that, um, hashing algorithm to be used. So Tevador, I mean, like this write-up is like amazing. He goes through the entire process, how he got here, talks about what he needed to change random X to get to this specific situation, and it's beautiful. So he actually borrowed from this um, Zcash, I believe even Zcash funded research and and add it to random x in a way and ended up getting the tor algorithm and i just want to keep saying this like even in the, the satoshi's white paper proof of work is essentially one cpu one vote 
And in the white paper, Satoshi doesn't mention ASICs. He doesn't mention like massive mining farms. His dream is one CPU, one vote, essentially, from the white paper. So I believe that Monero is really taking that seriously. But I feel like a lot of um, other coins don't really try it. You know, don't try to be ASIC resistant. They just like, okay, well, it's, it's inevitable that they're, you're going to have large mining farms that centralized. But they're a big issue, right? Because if a mining market is centralized, they can be e easily told by the government, edit this transaction, don't do this transaction. And that, and that already happens on Bitcoin. All the mining in Bitcoin is already censored to a certain degree. All of the American mining is already censored by American laws, essentially. So you, you're not going to have an American miner put out a block that doesn't have OFAC compliant blocks, essentially. So that's is already happening is a fact. But but let's say China doesn't have those same rules. So some of the blocks are also mined in China. So you do still get some de decentralization, but all American blocks mined in America by American pools are already censored. And this sort of prevents that from happening. And, and if that censorship rises to a major level, like if China and the US work to censor transactions, they could probably censor a lot of transactions. But I don't know how much, um, how likely it is for America and China to come together to work on um, censoring their citizens. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe that might happen in the future. <laughs> I don't want to give yeah, any I, ideas. I don't, I don't think that's would be too surprising because it's it's yeah. At the end of the day, the, the bank the banking industry itself mm -hmm. at the highest level is pretty coordinated on a global level, right? Whether it's you know, um, so to, yeah. To imagine a world where in uh, countries are coordinating to, to censor is not that hard to imagine. Because I'm pretty sure, I don't want to give random off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure if you added China and like associated places in there in America mining together, you would get way over 50% mining hash rate. Like mm -hmm. easily, I believe. I believe even like America has, I mean, like 40 of the global hash rate for like for bitcoin mining i believe right now so if you add china that you probably get like maybe like random number like maybe like set like you would get some way over 51 percent. so like if doug said if they work together to to scissor transactions there's like not really you know much you could do to prevent that especially since they, they don't have privacy built into the base layer so it's this is really important work that rand um the random x team is putting out really really vital work i just want to reiterate this is like second frame part of Monero, but yeah. Um, let's see. Any any other questions before we go to the quiz? Uh, no, no, no. All good. Yeah. So it's really um. I I don't I don't want to sound like broken record. They did great work. Tor is now and Tor is now is now using this live to protect his network from being abused, and it's really cool stuff. But as far as a uh, quiz goes, um, yeah. If, if you listen to Doug's um, podcast with Howard Chu, you would know the answer to this. Um, the major language that the random x predecessor was written in was javascript c plus plus c or rust or based in this was based in this language and and he talks about it really he mentions it a lot because the answer yeah the answer is interesting any any suggestions i will tell you know the answer probably i actually do uh, i would go with uh, I don't want to say. I don't want to sound stupid. <laughs> well, I, I don't. I don't want to say it was written in it. It, it uses this language extensively, which will be surprising. <laughs> JavaScript. If it's surprising. Russ, someone said Russ. Michael says Russ. C. I Russ, know it's you don't, not you know Russ. That? Um, I think if I remember, it's some of it was actually uh, JavaScript, JavaScript based, JavaScript, which seems yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really not true. But I, I, I remember yep. that being partly true. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry. The answer is actually yes, JavaScript. Yeah. random js and it's really cool because um one of the really cool things that he tried before was having because when you, you know when you do a, a hash right most hashes just take in data and they do a, a programmatic way to, to with that data but a way of making it uh, more cpu optimized was to have the actual code generated randomly also and the input to that code generated randomly also mm -hmm. and javascript is really good for making random um, random code essentially. Yes, it's all coming really back cool. to me now. Yes. Yeah, you yeah, we didn't hear you actually just heard that. I've I was had like, all these crazy. conversations with the sources, but it was that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> so he actually used JavaScript to make random code that would then be given or random instructions that would then be given random input also, which makes it very CPU um 
friendly compared to being like a GPU, given the way these architectures are designed. I believe that he ran into some like specific issues with it. So that's why he transitioned to random X. But it's a, it's a really cool, really cool random fact. Like like Tuxedo said, you wouldn't expect JavaScript to be used in something like this. But yeah. And then more interviews. That's Trevor Doors. Wonderful face there in this interview with uh, Monero Talk. One of my favorite ones that I think you've probably had, because I mean, it has Howard uh, Howard Chu in it, Tevin Door, and y'all are talking about like random X. So it's like really cool stuff. You can Google it. And then once again, if you want to find the devlog, we have the link here. But you want, if you Google DOS protection for Onion services from random X to Equax in Tevin Door's name, his GitHub repo will show up. And it's a great read. And he also has one um, on his profile about random X specifically, also. So really cool stuff. We have uh, Nick Nick G uh, is talking about how a lot of the mining is mm -hmm. uh, s he's claiming is centralized by botnets. What's it, what's your take on that, Digo? And have uh, do you have a response to that? I mean, you can't. It depends, depends how you define centralized because I mean a botnet. Yeah, I mean, 20% is not, yeah, that's not that, yeah, body said 20%, so that's not centralized at all. And it's kind of hard to get a figure on it because a botnet, by definition, is going gonna, is gonna to be hard to trace. Mm -hmm. So it sort of is also, and that's also where you, the result where you're going to get when you have a decentralized market. If anyone can participate, you're going to have people stealing compute from other one. And there, yeah, dot body also said there's not one botnet, so they're not really centralized. There's no government that says you have to edit these transactions. Botnets would just process whoever pays them. <laughs> yeah. Nick, Nick G's argument is, well, essentially centralized by hackers, right? Because these, these hacking groups that are taking over computing power. Uh, and so he's saying it's similar to ASICs. They have an unfair advantage. I mean, I guess the, the major differences are, are concerned. Not, not saying this is ideal, uh, but mm -hmm. are, are naturally this is how things have evolved. But the major difference, our concern with the ASICs is that these are large companies that are running these yeah. things that are essentially ultimately in cahoots with the state, with the government, uh, because we yeah. know that's how things always work, right? So these companies get large enough to the degree where they're willing to do whatever the government tells them to do, even if that means potentially censoring transactions, because at the end of the day, they just care about their, their profits. Uh, and if that means abiding by the regulations or even suggesting to the government that certain regulations be put in place, which they end up benefiting from and locking out the little guys and making it difficult for them to get into the mining mm -hmm. industry. That's what we're really concerned about. Um, you know, hackers that are that are stealing compute power to mine Monero. Obviously not ideal for various reasons, but it I don't see a scenario in where this large group of hackers is is approached by the state. I don't know, unless it becomes the state <laughs> itself that that is running these botnets. I mean, I guess you could go down <laughs> go down that road. Um, but yeah, I twenty percent is the number that I've historically is, have always heard in terms of percentage. I don't know if that is a, a trend that will get eventually get worse or better or stay the same. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you said, there's no, nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna be perfect. Life is unfair, so some people might be able to still compute and get an unfair advantage. But as long as people don't, I will, you know, other reasons. But if they're not gonna edit, you know, prevent. I, I doubt these hackers will edit my transaction and prevent me from spinning my Monero, even if they could. So it's, you know, it is what it is. Twenty percent is not that big issue at all. I say, I would say honestly, a bigger issue. If you want to talk about real issues in Monero, this happened recently. Was I believe the mining. A, a mining pool in Monero was actually, I think, had over 50% of the hash rate, like on August the 23rd. Yes, we'll get like, to that. Yes. Oh, that's in the news. Okay, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it then. But that's actually, you know, a real, a, a real issue. It doesn't have the same implications that it does in Bitcoin because of Monero's privacy layer and how that works. But it was, it definitely is, you know, an issue with centralization. Yes. Uh, but Nick G, you're you're welcome to jump on the show anytime yeah. to to bring this up, and hopefully we'll have some people on that can engage with you. But I think you said you can't jump on today. But yeah, in the future, when you can, please please join us live. All right. Yeah. Anything yeah, else? To you? All right. Oh, I'm I'm excited to talk about talk about the recent the um, not fifty more percent attack, but like the over. 
you know, usage of one pool. I'm excited to hear about it in the news. But yeah, I'll be here for that. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of a uh, lot of big news today. So let's we'll we'll keep moving and we'll try to get a good group up on stage. We could all chime in on the news topics. Please stick around, Digun, so you can uh, chime in. Awesome as always. Thanks, Digun. Mm-hmm.